Apply conditioning formatting to the stock level column so that the cells that contain text order are formatted with bold, italic, and a font color of dark blue text too. Apply gradient format to the quantity in stock columns. So let's, let's do one at a time. Apply conditioning formatting to the stock level column. So here is our stock level column. And we want to bold italics. So we want to work with the stock level column, which is cell G15 to G42 on the bulbs worksheet. We went out to conditioning formatting and we're looking to do our highlight cell rules. We want to the cell so the text orders are formatted with bold italics. And we want a font color of dark blue text to with gradient fill blue data bars so we want to come down to data bars we want gradient this is a blue data bar. That's what we want. Blue data bar rules. And we want to format all cells based on their values. And we want a data bar, minimum automatic, automatic, we want our borders to be blue too, solid border, let's make that blue too, dark blue text too, and we click OK. The next thing it asks us to do is apply gradient fill blue data bars to the quantity and stock column. So we look at quantity and stock. We want to come over here to conditioning formatting. We want those gradient fill blue data bars. So we're going to come down to data bars, gradient fill. This is light blue. Oh, that's light blue, and this is dark blue. So the first one is dark blue. And you can see how those. It's kind of neat. You can see 222 is way, way larger than, say, 25 on the data bar. Um, make sure you save and apply the same type of formatting to your trees. So we're going to go ahead and come on down here. Highlight cells A15 to A42. Come over to conditioning formatting. Pick data bars. Pick gradient fill. And we're going to save. Step nine, in the bulb sheet, so we're going to switch back here to the bulbs worksheet, format the range A14 to G42. So we're at A14, we're going to go all the way down to G42, and we're being asked to make it a table with headers. So we're going to kind of come over here to the insert tab, which is our third tab, and hit tables. When we do hit tables, it'll say, do you want with header? Look at our pop-up dialog box here. You want to make sure that you click yes, indeed. My table has headers. And click OK. We're being asked to apply table style 20. So we can come up here to design and come to table design and come over here and find 
table style light 20. So these are our light choices up here. And I'm going to ask 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, you should be, oops, see, that's a 20. And this is, that was 19, and this is 20. So you need to be able to hold your mouse there till you get that right pop-up, and you're able to identify the name of our table. Insert a total row and filter. Okay, so we're going to come down here. And, oops, I'm sorry, I'm going to click back on the table, and we're going to click a total row. So it'll, right there in design, we click total row. And filter by category for tulips. So your category is right here. We click here and see how you have the pull-down drop-up box? We can filter by, um, oh, we can also do it up here, I'm sorry filter by tulips. So we only want tulips and so we unselect all and we pro select tulips and we go OK and everything shrinks down to just our five tulips and then sum the quantity in stock column and that would be quantity in stock. So we're supposed to sum that column. We can click that and come to the pull down menu in that cell A43 and come to sum. So we have 433 tulips in stock and rec record the result in cell B11. So cell B11 should equal cell 43, but we want to make sure that it identifies it as the table with total. So we, if we click cell 40, A43, it will do that for us. And we hit enter, and it's showing us our 433 in cell B12 as well as cell 43. Step 10, clear the filter from the table. Remember we were up here at category, and we filtered for tulips, well now we want to include everybody. So we want select all, click OK, the whole table comes back, so you never really lose your data. Sort the table on the item number column. Over here. From smallest to largest. So we're going to click that pull down menu and sort A to Z, which is ascending, also smallest to largest, and then remove the total row. Remove it. Hmm. Wonder why. I'm just going to highlight it and hit delete. But we can also come up here to design on table and undo total row. So yes. And I'm going to save again. And on the page layout tab, so we're going to come up here to page layout, set print title so that row 14 repeats at the top of each page. So we want to come up here to the page layout to page setup and go print titles. But the print area, it, rows to repeat at top, is A14. So we're going to go A14. Um, so that row 14 repeats at the top. So it would probably be A14 to um, G14. So let's do a colon and a G14. And we want it to repeat at the top of each page. And we click OK. And that's the end of step 10.